Hello and welcome to another episode where we attempt to sleep but we succeed because if we do not succeed something will happen to us I don't know who will inflict it but I can give you an idea while we wait for Larry to settle down and while we wait for you to settle down he is touching the microphone you want to not do that? thank you before you settle down I have something to tell you I have just launched the merch shop merchandise stop touching the microphone I can pet you instead okay good good I launched my merchandise store so the first five people to purchase with the code lunch I know this is not how you spell lunch English is not my first language you will get five dollar off the first five people look at this product amazing so I am not only asking you I am instructing you go buy merch because this channel is not monetized yet now that this is covered and you went and bought some merchandise for yourself today we are going to be reading Elf Layla wa Layla which mean tales from the Arabian Nights a thousand and one nights not only a thousand so here's what's going to happen you are going to lay down and you are going to prepare yourself to go to sleep because I'm going to tell you a story you're going to listen to it with your ears not with your eyes not with your lips not with your nose unless you have some condition where you can smell stories you are going to lay down and listen you know how people speak different languages this book was originally in Arabic which is a language I understand very well the version I have is in English which is probably a version you would understand better I'm assuming most of you are in the United States according to my channel analytics today we are not going to be speaking the language of English nor the language of Arabic we are going to be speaking the language of sleep okay yalla habibi I'm going to be reading an excerpt from the tale of the three apples I like apples I haven't read this before at least not in English so hopefully I can understand hopefully you can understand too because this English is very old as old as you maybe are your eyes closed? see I know I can tell when your eyes are not closed I can just assume Habibi close your eyes okay I'm going to be begin there's a tale of three apples Larry you want to settle down no you cannot play with the microphone right now sit down it's okay Shh, it's okay sit down yes they relate O king of the age and lord of the time and of these days that the caliph Harun al-Rashid summoned his wazir Jafar one night and said to him I desire to go down into the city and question the common folk concerning the conduct of those charged with its governance and those of whom they complain we will depose from office and those whom they commend 
we will promote. That sounds like a plan to me. Hearkening and obedience. So the Caliph went down with Jafar and Eunuch. Eunuch Masrur, whose name is Eunuch, to the town. He doesn't have balls, I'm assuming. And walked about the streets and markets. And as they were treading a narrow alley, they, come, they came upon a very old man with a fishing net and crate to carry small fish on his head. And in his hand was a staff. And as he walked at a leisurely pace, he repeated these lines. They say me, thou shinest a light to mankind, with thy lore as the night which the moon doth uplight. I answer a truce to your jesta and your gribes. That's in us. A truce to your jests and your gibes. Without luck, what is learning? A poor devil white. Are you understanding this? If they stake me to pawn with my lore in my pouch, with my volumes to read and my ink case to write. For one day's provision, they never could pledge me, as likely on doomsday to draw bill at sight. How poorly indeed does it fare with the poor, with his pauper existence and beggarly plight. In summer he faileth provision to find, in winter the fire pots his only delight. That's beautiful. The street dogs with bite and bark to him rise, and each lossel receives with him with bark and with bite. If he lifts up his voice and complains of his wrong, none pities or heeds him. However, he is right. Remind me of me. And when sorrows and evils like these he must brave, his happiest homestead were down in the grave. So those were the lines that the man was spewing. When the Caliph heard his verses, he said to Ja'far, See this poor man and note his verses, for surely they point to his necessities. Then he accosted him and asked, O Shaykh, what be thine occupation? What be thine occupation? Thine is yours, I'm assuming. And the poor man answered, O my Lord, I am a fisherman with a family to keep, and I have been out between midday and this time. And not a thing has Allah made my portion, where whistle to feed my family. I cannot even pawn myself to buy them a supper, and I hate and disgust my life, and I hanker after this. Ya haram, he could not fish, so he wants to die. If you die, you will not feed your family, Ahmar. Quoth the Caliph, Say me, wilt thou return with us to Tigris bank and cast thy net on my luck? And whatsoever turneth up, I will buy of thee for a hundred gold pieces. The man rejoiced when he heard these words and said, On my head be it, I will go back with you. It's funny because in Arabic you say arasi, which means on my head, which means Positive, I agree. You are mine, or I am yours, rather. I will do your bidding. Okay, good enough. So he says, I will go back with you. And returning with them, river words. This book is heavy. No, no, Habibi, it's okay. This guy cannot sleep today. And returning with them, river words, made a cast and waited a while. Then he hauled in the rope and dragged the net ashore, and there appeared it, a chest padlocked and heavy. So he did not get fish, he got a chest. The caliph examined it and lifted it, finding it weighty, like your mom. So he gave the fisherman 200 dinars and sent him about his business.
200 dinars. First he say I will give you gold. Sounds scummy, Habib. Whilst Masrur, aided by the Caliph, carried the chest to the palace and set it down and lighted the candles. Jafar and Masrur then broke it open and found therein a basket of palm leaves corded with red worsted. I don't know what worsted means. This they cut open and saw within it a piece of carpet which they lifted out and under it was a woman's mantilla folded in four which they pulled out. And at the bottom of the chest they came upon a young lady, fair as a silver ingot, slain and cut into nineteen pieces. When the caliph looked upon her, he cried, Alas! And tears ran down his cheeks, and turning to Jafar, he said, O dog of wazirs, shall folk be murdered in our reins and be cast into the river to be a burden and a responsibility for us on the day of doom? So they found a woman dismembered in the chest. Ya haram. By Allah, we must avenge this woman on her murderer, and he shall be made die the worst of deaths. And presently he added, Now, as surely as we are descended from the son of Abbas, if thou bring us not him who slew her, that we do her justice on him. I will hang thee at the gate of my palace, thee and forty of thy kiss and kin by thy side. Jafar says, Grant me three days delay. And then the caliph said, We grant thee this. So Jafar went out from below before him and returned to his own house, full of sorrow and saying to himself, How shall I find him who murdered this damsel, that I may bring him before the caliph? If I bring other than the murderer, it will be laid to my charge by the Lord. In very sooth, I wot not what to do. So he was afraid he will not find the right murderer, and then the Lord will bring down his wrath on him. He kept his house three days, and on the fourth day, the caliph sent one of the chamberlains for him, and, as he came into the presence, asked him, Where is the murderer of the damsel? He just assumed he find him. He went and asked people, Habibi, is it you? Did you kill this woman? Put her in a chest? Ahmar. <laughs> Where is the murderer of the damsel? To which he answered, Jafar, O commander of the faithful, am I inspector of murdered folk that I should ken who killed her? The caliph was furious at his answer and bade hang him before the palace gate and commanded that a crier cry through the streets of Baghdad. Whoso would see the hanging of Jafar, the Barmaki wazir of the caliph, with forty of the Barmecides, his cousins and kinsmen, before the palace gate. Let him, let him come and let him look. So he want to hang him because he did not find the murderer. Well, doesn't that make you a murderer, Yahmar? The people flocked out from all the quarters of the city to witness the execution of Jafar and his kinsmen, not knowing the cause. Then they set up the gallows and made Jafar and the others stand on their knees in readiness for execution. But whilst every eye was looking for the caliph's signal and the crowd wept for Jafar and his cousins of the Barmecides, lo and behold, a young man Fair of face and neat of dress. You're good. So before they could kill him, a man appears. And of favor like the moon raining light, with eyes black and bright, and the brow flower white, and cheeks red as rose and young down where the beard grows, and the mole like a grain of ambergris, is that like a hamburger? Hamburgers pushed his way through the people till he stood immediately before the wazir and said to him, Safety to thee from the strait. 
O Prince of the Emirs and Asylum of the Poor, I am the man who slew the woman you found in the chest, so hang me for her and do her justice on me. When Ja'far heard the youth's confession, he rejoiced at his own deliverance, but grieved and sorrowed for the fair youth. Habibi, you were about to die. It's no time to grieve for the man. And whilst they were yet talking, behold, another man, well stricken in years, pressed forwards through the people and thrust his way amid the populace till he came to Ja'far and the youth, whom he saluted, saying, O oh, thou the wazir and prince, sans peer, I believe not the words of this youth. Of a surety none murdered the damsel but I. Take her reek on me this moment. For, and thou do not thus, I will require it of thee before Almighty Allah. Another man is taking the blame. Then quoth the young man, O wazir, this is an old man in his dotage who what is not, what's all he says, ever. And I am he who murdered her. So do thou avenge her on me, quoth the old man. O oh, my son, so the old man says, O oh, my son, thou art young and desired the joys of the world, and I am old and weary, and surfeited with the world. I understand. I will offer my life as a ransom for thee and for the wazir and his cousins. No one murdered the damsel but I. So Allah upon thee, make haste to hang me, for no life is left in me now that hers is gone. The wazir marveled much at all at his strangers and, taking the young man and the old man, carried them before the caliph, where after kissing the ground seven times between his hands, he said, O commander of the faithful, I bring thee the murderer of the damsel. Where is he? asked the caliph, and Ja'far answered, This young man says, I am the murderer, and this old man giving him the lie says, I am the murderer, and behold, here are the twain standing before thee. The caliph looked at the old man, and the young man asked, Which of you killed the girl? The young man replied, No one slew her, save I. <laughs> and the old man answered, Indeed none killed her but myself. So they are both trying to get killed because they killed the damsel. Then said the caliph to Ja'far, Take the twain and hang them both. <laughs> this guy is something else. Khalas, kill them both, Habibi. But Ja'far rejoined, since one of them was the murderer, to hang the other were mere injustice. Ja'far is clever. By him who raised the firmament and the spread the earth like a carpet, I am he who slew the damsel. That's the youth talking. And he went on to describe the matter, the manner of her murder and the basket, the mantilla and the bit of carpet. In fact, all that the caliph had found upon her. <laughs> so the caliph was certified that the young man was the murderer. Whereat he wondered and asked him, What was the cause of thy wrongfully doing this damsel to die? And what made thee confess the murder without the bastinado? And what brought thee here to yield up thy life? And what made thee say do her reek upon me? That's a lot of questions, Habibi. The youth answered, No, O commander of the faithful, that this woman was my wife and the mother of my children. That's all he had to say, bro. Also, my first cousin and the daughter of my paternal uncle, this old man who is my father's own brother. When I married her, she was a maid, and Allah blessed me with three male children by her. She loved me and served me, and I saw no evil in her, for I also loved her with, with the fondest love. Now on the first day of this month she fell ill with grievous sickness, and I fetched, fetched in physicians for her, but the recovery came to her little by little, and when I wished her to go to the Hamman bath, she said, 
there is something I long for before I go to the bath, and I long for it with an exceeding longing. To hear is to comply, I said. And what is it? So she says, I have a crazy craving for an apple, to smell it and bite it. I replied, Hadst thou a thousand longings, I would try to satisfy them. So I went on the instant into the city and sought for apples, but could find none. Yet, they had cost a gold piece each, each would I have bought them. I was vexed at this and went home and said, O daughter of my uncle, by Allah I can find none. She was distressed, and being very weakly, and her weakness increased greatly on her that night, I felt anxious and alarmed on her account. As soon as morning dawned, I went out again and made the round of the gardens, one by one, but found no apples anywhere. At last, there met an old gardener of whom I asked about them, and he answered, O oh my son, this fruit is a rarity with us, and is not now to be found save in the garden of the commander of the faithful at Bassora, where the gardener keepeth it for the caliph's eating. I returned to my house, troubled by my ill success, and my love for my wife and my affection moved me to undertake the journey. So I got me ready and set out and traveled fifteen days and nights, going and coming, and brought her three apples which I brought from the gardener for three dinars. But when I went in to my wife and set them before her, she took no pleasure in them and let them lie by her side. That bitch, for her weakness and, oh, for her weakness and fever had increased on her and her malady lasted without abating ten days, after which time she began to recover health. So I left my house, and betaking me to my shop, sat there buying and selling, and about midday, behold, a great ugly black slave, long as a lance and broad as a bench, passed by my shop, holding in hand one of the three apples wherewith he was playing. So I said, O oh my God, O oh my good slave, tell me whence thou tookest that apple, that I might get the like of it. He laughed and answered, I got it from my mistress, for I had been absent, and on my return I found her lying ill with three apples by her side. And she said to me, My horned whittle of a husband made a journey for them to Basora, and bought them for three dinars. So I ate and drank with her, and I took this one from her. When I heard such words from the slave, O commander of the faithful, the world grew, grew black before my face, and I arose and locked up my shop and went home beside myself for excess of rage. I looked for the apples and folding and finding only two of the three, Asked my wife, O oh my cousin, where is the third apple? And raising her head languidly, she answered, I wot not, O son of my uncle, where it is gone? So she was bitch. This convinced me that the slave had spoken the truth. So I took a knife and coming behind her got upon her breast without a word said and cut her throat. Okay, Habibi, relax. Then I hooed her, who hooed off her head and her limbs in pieces, and wrapping her in her mantilla and rag of carpet, hurriedly sewed up the hole which I set in a chest, and locking it tight, loaded it on my he mule and threw it into the tigris with my own hands. So Allah upon thee, O commander of the faithful, make haste to hang me as I fear least she appeal for vengeance on the resurrection day. <laughs> he, was, he want to die because he does not want to wait for her resurrection because she will be mad. Let's wait for this airplane. <sighs> 
for when I had thrown her into the river, and none knew aught of it, as I went back home and I found my eldest son crying, and yet he knew not of what I had done with his mother. I asked him, What has made thee weep, my boy? He answered, I took one of the three apples which were by mommy, and went down into the lane to play with my brethren, when behold, a big long black slave snatched it from my hand, and said, Whence hadst thou this? I said, My father travelled far for it, and brought it from Basora for my mother who was ill, and the two apples for which he paid, three to cuts. He took no heed of my words, and I asked for the apple a second and a third time, but he cuffed me and kicked me, and went off with it. I was afraid lest my mother should swinge me on account of the apple, so for fear of her, I went with my brother outside of the city and stayed till the evening closed in upon us. And indeed, I am in fear of her. And now by Allah, O oh my father, say nothing to her of this, or it may add to her ailment. When I heard what my child said, I knew that the slave who he had hot, who had fo I knew, yeah, when I heard what my child said, I knew that the slave who the slave was he who had foully slandered my wife, the daughter of my uncle, and was certified that I had slain her wrongfully. Ya haram. So I wept with exceeding weeping, and presently this old man, my paternal uncle and her father, came in. And I told him what had happened, and he sat down by my uncle, and wept, and we ceased not weeping till midnight. We have kept up mourning for her these last five days, and we lamented her in the deepest sorrow, for that she was unjustly done to die. This came from the gratuitous lying of the slave, the blackamoor, and this was the manner of my killing her. So I conjure thee, by the honor of thine ancestors, make haste to kill me and do her justice upon me. As there is no living for me after her. Wow. The Caliph marveled at his words and said, By Allah, the young man is excusable. I will hang none but the accursed slave, and I will do a deed which shall comfort the ill at ease and suffering and what shall please the all-glorious king. Crazy. We can keep going all day. But I assume you are asleep already. Larry is asleep. What do we learn from this story? We learn not to steal apples from little kids and beat them which is something I used to do every day, but now I'm going to stop. Khalas, no more beating kids for apples, even if their mother is sick. And I hope you will not be beating kids for apples either. This will conclude today's episode. I hope you had a great time relaxing because the story was keeping you at the edge of your seat or edge of your bed or I don't know where you sleep. Make sure to check out the merch in the, the description. If not, I will haunt you in your sleep. And I will hear you weep. Khalas, enough. Thank you for watching and listening, and I will see you next time.